Mike Zorn, uh, Associate Professor, Chair Chemistry at UW-Green Bay, and then you also have an associate here, right? Uh, Ken Smith, Research Specialist, UW-Stout, Founder and President, Cool Science. I like the name, Cool Science, LLC. <laughs> thank you. Okay, uh, thank you very much. I uh, appreciate the opportunity to be here. Uh, I'm going to talk briefly about our project involving uh, photocatalytic fuel cells. Um, this project's in a little bit earlier stages than most of the projects you're going to hear about or have heard about already. Uh, we're in about, uh, we've, we've been working on this project maybe a little over a year. Um, just to give you some background, again, I want to echo some of the things that other people have, have, have mentioned about MJON. Um, my background is in photocatalysis. Um, basically, it's a, a special type of uh, catalyst that's activated by light. I knew very little about fuel cells before this project started. Um, I had a, a meeting with MJON, and I was talking with them about this idea for replacing traditional catalysts with uh, photocatalyst, and I was kind of interested in that idea. And he uh, immediately said, well, you should talk with Kenny Smith. And I said, well, okay, I don't know Kenny Smith. But um, next thing I know, I, I was meeting with him and uh, put in a couple of proposals. And we got uh, some funding from, from WISIS uh, to start the project. And then we got another year's funding. So um, you know, that without uh, WISIS efforts and MJON's efforts, I don't, this, this project definitely wouldn't be um, what it is now. Uh, I'm going to give you, if I have the right uh, page down here. Uh, I've got a number of slides here. I'm going to go through them pretty quickly. Uh, we have this information. Most of this information is on the poster. So if you want more information, you can, you can talk with us after or uh, come check out the poster. Uh, basically, um, a conventional fuel cell, just the things I want to just show you here, it, it, it brings in uh, hydrogen and oxygen in air. Um, the, the main ingredient here, the thing that we're, we're trying to focus on is this platinum catalyst. So there's platinum catalyst on both sides that makes the reaction happen. So Hydrogen comes in, oxygen comes in, uh, you get water vapor out, and you also get electricity. Okay, so what we're trying to focus in on is this platinum catalyst here. A um, number of issues with traditional platinum catalysts, um, high cost, okay, so they're typically very expensive materials, there's limited availability issues with them, um, they can be poisoned by a variety of things. So there's a number of disadvantages with platinum that's uh, in a lot of, uh, a lot of people's opinions that that is a main reason why uh, fuel cells haven't been more widely uh, used and applied. So what we're trying to do is uh, see if we can't replace the platinum catalyst with a photocatalytic material. Okay, just in short, uh, photocatalyst is typically a semiconductor material, um, and it's activated by uh, light. Usually, it's UV light, and uh, people are now using uh, different formulations su such that visible light can be used. So. Uh, it's not a very reactive material in and of itself. If you heat it or if you hit it with UV or, or even visible light, it becomes an active uh, surface. Um, it has the ability to work at low temperature if you're using light. Okay, so you don't have to uh, heat the catalyst up to very high temperatures. It can work at room temperature. Typically fairly low uh, operating cost, especially if you could get by with using sunlight to, to drive the reactions. Uh, again, this is the same slide we looked at before. This is the uh, traditional catalyst with platinum. The idea here is to replace the platinum with a photocatalyst material, and uh, you'd have to shine light on one or both sides, depending on the configuration, and uh, hopefully get the reaction to happen. Uh, hopefully, maybe you've checked these out already. If not, you can swing by the, the table that we have out. We have a number of prototypes uh, based on uh, Kenny's designs and, and a lot of the efforts with people at uh, Stout. Um, we've uh, been able to, or Kenny's been able to make these, and, and we're in the process of testing uh, the operation. We've got a couple here which have internal light sources. Um, you can see the, the, whites, the, the wires coming out. We have another uh, version or two that just have windows where the light can be uh, shown in from, from the outside. Uh, and just a little bit more specifics and reiterate, the, the funding that we've received from WISIS, um, we got a, a year, year's worth of money to do a, an applied research grant. Uh, that was mainly to, to show proof of concept, to build a few prototypes, and uh, show the basic, uh, uh, like I said, proof of concept that the, the idea works. The second year, uh, we've, uh, we're in the process of uh, completing a WISCAP project, and uh, we're, a big part of this is focused on some of the design challenges that are, uh, go into to making a working fuel cell um, that incorporates uh, uh, input of light. So it's, uh, there are a number of things that we need to work on to, and, and try to improve in order to, uh, to optimize the system. And then another big part of this project is to uh, try to synthesize um, additional catalyst materials that we can try and, and uh, try to uh, compare with other, other versions. 
Um, and if, with that, I think uh, that's all I would really wanted to say. Great. Okay. Thanks so much, Mike. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Lisa. Yeah. And I just wanted to let you know it's a pleasure to be here, and it's a great pleasure to work with the likes of Mike Zorn. And, and uh, we have a Discovery Center at my UW Stout, where I'm at, and UW Green Bay, and with Weiss. And because of that, we've been able to advance that far. And what it is, it, it's really exciting because what we're working on is development of fuel cells here in this state for, for the good of all of us. And fuel cells have been plagued by high cost and poor dependability. And we are working on that problem. And we have the vast majority of it solved, I want to say. <laughs> but I think we're working on it quite well. And we got what uh, we're working on the cost. With Mike Zorn, we're trying to eliminate platinum. As you all know, platinum is a very pricey material. And if we can eliminate the need for platinum in a cell, that's one nail in the coffin for the cost. Uh, the next uh, cost factor is we're working on what I call a pressure balanced fuel cell, which is a, a unique design that's meant for, for uh, basically balancing hydrogen and oxygen in, in a fuel cell to eliminate the undependability of these cells caused from crossover. And it's a real simple solution in that it's just basically a, a diaphragm built within the fuel cell. But a bigger picture of that cost is that that diaphragm and the mechanical architecture of this design allows us to injection mold the fuel cell. And what that does is that's going to bring the cost of manufacturing of the cell down. All these points together bring the cost of the fuel cell down and I believe we can do it within the realm of, of commercialization very shortly here is the plan. So, um, and that wouldn't have happened without the likes of M. John and the Weiss Foundation, the Discovery Center, collaborators like Schmidt Prototype here, here in the audience today, Mike Zorn and everybody else that we've been involved with, other industrial collaborators not here today. And even at UW-Madison here, we have collaborators. So it's been a pleasure. And we're working on getting the fuel cell industry up and running. And we're really close to commercialization. And we're nailing the cost and, and the dependability. And once we have that, we have a product available for market and made here in Wisconsin. So all because of Weiss's. Thank you. Great, thanks.